Chainsaw Man, episode 12, and I think the last episode for who knows how long. Ooh, and he flashes back. That comment didn't age well. That comment didn't age well. He lost his best friend, but at least he kept the smoking habit. It didn't stop. Underage, being underage didn't stop her from dragging Denji's lifeless corpse over her shoulder caveman style to have her away with him. She's a classic example of look at what people do, not what they say. Until I get drunk. <laughs> All jokes aside, that was a terribly sad and sweet flashback. And this is this is her her devil contract, or it was. But it let him go? What does it have, like her memories or something? What the Oh my god, it's the cigarette. What the hell? She's still like alive in some way. Ooh, that's bizarre. I think he's ready for an addiction. Easy revenge. This is quite the development. The devil's got got a, a bias. Why is it so beautiful? Why is it so oddly beautiful? Yeah, he's, he's not lying about that. Yeah, like I've been saying for a while, this is not a man that you can mess with anymore. <laughs> that was insane. That was a beautiful and terrifying at the same time. Going into this fight, I really did not expect there to be a chance for this kind of goodbye, let's call it. For Himeno. In a way, it also feels like some kind of closure on Aki's past. Like, it's done. It's gone. And he seems to have made some peace with that. It was also a much more pleasing goodbye than their actual goodbye, which is just horrific. Man, I'm gonna miss this opening so much. I'm guessing this is the last time. Honestly, it's one of my favorite openings of all time, I think. It felt like an instant classic to me when I first saw it, and it's one of those openings that I like more with each viewing. And it also makes a lot more sense, like, now that we've been exposed to all the elements. I'm kind of terrified to see how this half season ends, too. This show is just so full of surprises from, from the first episode. I feel like it's going to end in a crazy way. One thing we know about Chobani, she's not afraid to use that knife. <laughs> it beats hostess work, brothel work. He's acting like he hasn't eaten worse. Power is nothing if not super discreet. That, yes, there it is. <laughs> and there's his clothes. Denji moves on with his life. I mean, presumably they're a lot more powerful than before, after all their training. <laughs> She's talking to herself. Denji's just gone. I don't know how they ended up being such a great duo, despite being such a terrible duo. That's sort of the point of zombies. Like, kind of interferes with Denji's boob plans. Yeah. Yeah, that's not surprising. And Denji has left the building. <laughs> Man, I know I've said it before, but... The designs of these two together are amazing. So cool. Denji has left the neighborhood. That's a much more elevated answer than usual, his usual boob response, but obviously there's more to him than that. 
Oh my god, this is so beautifully animated. So much focus on his sneakers. Are they for sale? Man, I'm just trying to get to work. <laughs> I'm trying to get to work or school or whatever. Why was she on the floor? She just fell on her own? Oh, his conscience is getting in the way. Who doesn't have a heart now? Yeah, it is sort of overpowered. How do you- what do you do against it? What the hell do you even do about that? It isn't fair. And why doesn't he just do that every time from the beginning? I don't know, I feel like this guy's a little bit delusional. No one cares about his granddad. Also, his granddad was kind of a jerk. Uh. Where'd he get him? Where did he- where did he get hit? All Granddad taught us was the exorbitant power of management and finder's fees. And if I recall correctly, how to earn money eating cigarettes. It's about way more than his Granddad. Oh my- what? What? Is this it? Is this it for this? Villain? He was so cool though. What the hell? I thought it was gonna be this long like protracted series of battles between them lasting until the finale. Two halves of a whole kind of thing. Now the only two halves I'm seeing is the two halves of his corpse. Boy, these commuters are gonna be really late. Oh, he made it. These devil powers. Yeah, speaking of demanding satisfaction. It's interesting because he's right and wrong at the same time. Like, Denji is both a lapdog and not a lapdog. He's free in his own special kind of way. I already know this is going to be a terrible and great idea. Why does it always come back to nuts with Denji? Right for the nuts. <laughs> He's backing up his promise in early season one. It's nuts or nothing, that's what it was. Satisfaction must be obtained through nuts. I don't think she would have really minded either. <laughs> it's pretty amazing how Himeno's presence is so clearly felt all these episodes later. She's still a very prominent character in the show. <laughs> He's all in! He's all in with the nuts game! You get to keep him. To go great in your apartment. And this is the first time his character shows fear, as he, as he should. Because Denji's gonna enjoy this a lot. The birds are fleeing the scene of the nut crime. <laughs> the Nutcracker Chainsaw Edition. <laughs> Can you see, hear this, the sounds of his nuts ringing? It's, it's so beautiful. What a heartfelt, emotional send-off for Himeno. Okay, so it's confirmed. I mean, this is if Makima's information can be trusted. Oh, okay. That's unfortunate. Oh no, my favorite character! We're 1.4 kilograms closer to building whatever the hell Makima is building with this stuff. Makima knows. I think she's known a lot more than she's letting on for a long time. Oh, we get a, a bro montage for the final ending. Cute. I was expecting, you know, a super huge twist to end the show for the first half season, but this is just as good. Man, do they feel unified now after everything that's happened. I feel like a real trio now. Well, twist, still possible. <laughs> Huge twist, still on the table. Or just smoke break. My dude is hammered. Why am I so on edge right now? The more this goes on in silence, the, the more agitated I'm becoming. This is how the show started. This is the opening moments of episode one. Mm. 
What's the deal with the what's the deal with the door and the alleyway? What does it mean, damn it? What does it mean? That was kind of haunting. I, I have no idea what to make of it, but oddly terrifying. My palms are sweating. I'm guessing manga readers know, know what it is or know what's coming. It's probably a preview, like the end of Marvel movies. Would you rather be a country mouse or city mouse? I don't know what the hell that means, but I know enough about Chainsaw Man to know it's going to be very, very important for Denji's character. It also is yet another animal reference, like Denji being the dog and Power being a cat. I'm kind of devastated that this is going to be it for who knows how long. I haven't really been keeping up to date with the the schedule and when the second half of season one is going to be released. My overall review of the first half of season one of Chainsaw Man, it's phenomenal. It just exceeded my wildest, wildest expectations. I had heard, you know, hype brewing about the show through comments from you guys for, for quite some time. And the only thing I knew about it was that it had hype, obviously, and the fact that it was called Chainsaw Man. So my imagination did what it did with a limited amount of information. And I just thought it was going to have great action. But what I got was so so much more than great action. I could talk about the animation, which is phenomenal. It looks beautiful. The music scoring is great. All that sort of, you know, visual aesthetic stuff. It's all just top tier. I mean, some of the greatest stuff I've ever seen, as much as that's not really my lens and not really something I usually talk about. It's something that I appreciate. What I think really blew me away by the show is that it reaches a level of art where it captures a depth of humanity that one, I think is not explored very often. Two, hits so deep in this sort of primordial way that it's something you just feel on a gut and instinctual level and it's almost hard to talk about. And that actually ties in with my, my first point about the fact that it's it's got some real insightful, truth, truthful beauty about, um, about man. I think part of what makes it so great is it's specifically targeting a very, very animalistic side of things. Humans as biological creatures, as animals, with base drives and instincts that are so old and so ingrained that while we can observe and talk about them, of course, they're kind of reserved to the, the subconscious domain. These instinctual things that end up being way more powerful, you know, they're kind of running the show to a certain degree, at least. I think the way thought about humanity has progressed, it seems like common conception has gone down a route where we give a little bit too much priority and too much weight to our rational capabilities and our sort of independence from nature, ability to craft our own lives sort of as a blank slate. And while of course the rational, controlled, higher functioning part of humanity is a real part of humanity, it's a huge mistake to overlook those raw instincts, that base state. And in fact, as I've argued during this reaction series, I think that even a lot of the ways we apply our rational faculties and the way we spend our energy and the way we think is probably by default secondary to those things and is operating in service to those things, even if it doesn't feel like it, especially if it's something that one has not really grappled with. In fact, I think the, the less one is able to grapple with the true kind of beastly nature of oneself and not recognize the truth of one's being in all its components and all its entities, the more likely it seems that one is going to be a slave to them. The first half of season one feels to me to be something like an ode to the beast. Denji is a great avatar of someone who's just this wild teenage kid. He's dog-like in pursuit of food and sexual gratification. There's no real lofty goal. There's no higher thinking. It's just kind of him acting impulsively based on his own pleasure. And there's something really thrilling about that because it's so rare to get a protagonist that is kind of that unchained. Protagonists usually come kind of more perfectly formed. They have higher values. They're capable of self-restraint. Denji is wild and restrained and he's quickly swept into a world where that's the driving force. This is brought up a lot with characters like Himeno and Aki, especially with dialogues with their teacher who are, you know, who's saying things like people who have attachments to other things or who have one foot in one foot out or who are not able to go all the way are basically endangering themselves and are not ready for this life. Denji is kind of the purest version of that, which ends up working really well and ends up making him likable despite the fact that he's, you know, this wild teenager. And also, like I was alluding to earlier, contains a certain kind of freedom in it. You know, like the, the villain was referring to him as a lapdog and yeah, he's a lapdog, but at the same time, he's a lapdog by choice, if that makes sense. He's a lapdog because this is what suits his impulses the best. And if that were to change, it feels like Denji also would change his priorities. I think one of the best things going for Denji in that regard that makes him likable and respectable is that he knows who he is. It feels like what's going to happen is because of this deep dive into this animalistic state and his wildness, he's likely, if he's able to, and if he has the right influences around him, he'll be able to get a handle, of, handle on it to the point where he's mastered something that is monstrously terrifying, but also extremely powerful. And with some kind of extra development and maybe values on top of it and camaraderie and things like that, he'll have the higher level value thinking that's so common in media, but also just extreme raw power and energy, if that makes sense. And that's just Denji. I mean, I think all the characters have something interesting going on that plays around these themes. Makima is brilliant as kind of this seductress who is just powerful and has everything she needs and is totally independent from others, understands the game and is able to play it really well. She herself being kind of a beast that has things more under control, being a little bit more seasoned. It's a realm of life that is real, but I think is terrifying and so therefore is largely unexplored. It's like the monster inside of people, the monster inside of people that comes from something so deep that it's hard to understand and creates a great danger in its silence, you know, living in its shadow kind of, but also it sort of contains a secret to this massive amount of power and potential and might be 
in a large way the key to success in some of the areas that people most covet success but are afraid to enter enter into the arena just because of the fact that you know you're going to meet other monsters in that quest that are more willing to go farther than you are it's like how much can you bargain with the devil for power before you've lost too much you know and you can't get your soul back it's a really exciting game if this sounds more rambly than usual this part of what i'm saying like the show has a way of hitting at something really ancient and old and deep in a way that's almost too artful to articulate it comes across as just feeling like raw feeling for me at least the way some of the shots are composed specifically you feel the the tension you feel the emotion without knowing specifically what's going on at least not right away this is one of those shows that i immediately feel there's infinite potential there's just so many ways it can go and so many ways it would be satisfying and it's only the first 12 episodes it's pretty amazing to think about it not like in terms of how much ground they covered and how much more they hooked into the show at this point so that's the end of season one hope you guys enjoyed these videos as much as i enjoyed making them it's been a blast thank you for watching and i guess i should update about the schedule basically on youtube there's gonna be i guess kind of a marathon to finish off the first season of spy family spy x family excuse me then i'm gonna continue with haiku and also i'm going to get back to season four Three, the final season of Mob Psycho, which I can't wait, cannot wait to get back to. March Comes In Like a Lion is ongoing on Patreon. I'm actually not sure if I'm going to make that YouTube available or not. So for now, the roster is My Hero Academia, Spy Family for a little bit, then Haikyuu, and Mob Psycho. So hope to see you guys for one or all of those. And before the video ends, I got to give a very, 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 very long overdue. Thank you and shout out to patrons. It's been a really bizarre period in the channel. It's been all over the place. There's been a million shows to watch. The schedule's been unclear. It's been as chaotic as it's been exciting. So thank you to everybody for putting up with that, I guess. And of course, for making these videos possible, for being the sole reason these videos exist that I can do any show at all. So a huge thank you to all patrons for the love and support. Love you guys, as always. Special shout out also to those who joined or rejoined the top tier on Patreon in the last couple months. And some of this might be repeat, just because I've lost track of where I was last time. Jasmine T. Enjoyer, Liam Matheson, Shiro Nyan, Lorwand, Alexis Amadeus, Richard Kim, Boo Hooligan, Damien DeBoard, Cody Gallo, Marathew, and LZ Wyrick. Thank you to you guys. Thank you to all patrons for the support. Thank you to everybody for watching. Love you guys and see you soon for one of the shows I mentioned or next time for the second half of season one of Chainsaw Man.